artificial intelligence. That's a technology used all over the world. But groups like the World Health Organization have warned that it can also be misused and cause harm. Regulators, they have warned of the risks and the challenges that come with AI and their impact on people. City News reporter Faiza Amin joins us live now. And there's one team that's actually looking to fix this problem. So let's break this down for our viewers. Good morning to you, Faiza. Good morning, Malice. So AI systems, you could pretty much find them all over the place. They're in our airports. They're used by some governments, police agencies. Uh, some of us have them in our phone. Social media apps like Instagram also use them. Uh, and in some cases, organizations even use them when they decide who to hire. So quite important. But it's humans who design the data uh, and the systems that make up AI systems. That's why it's so important. And there, that's where their scrutiny has been when it comes to biases in AI. So perhaps Amarabi is leading a team at the University of Toronto that's looking to fix this problem. And he tells me every single AI system has some sort of bias. So they launched this free service that's helping organizations and businesses, agencies fix their AI systems. They're going to first look at uh, their AI systems, who they're biased to, and how they could fix them. Here's more from Arabi. We can quantitatively measure how much bias there is. And from that, we can actually estimate what training data gaps there are. So people designing AI systems, we provide them a free service that we evaluate their AI and tell them in this demographic for this subgroup, you are not doing as well and by exactly this much. And so the hope is they can take that and improve their system, get more training data and make it more fair. I find it so interesting, Faiza, but obviously there are, as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of harm that can be done as well. So what more has the team learned? Okay, so they take about a week or two to perform this evaluation. Uh, every case is really unique because it depends what they're looking at. Is it facial recognition? Is it images? Uh, is it voice-based data perhaps on our phones? And Arabi tells me that the number one issue that they found there has been the lack of training data. Uh, and you heard me just moments ago saying that it's humans who design this data. So that's where the majority of the problem has been. He gives you the example of uh, a business in the U.S. that they've been working with, and they found that their AI system uh, is underrepresenting uh, the Hispanic community. So once they figure out who and where the bias is, they, prof uh, they provide some sort of report and guidelines on how these companies can uh, fix their AI system so that they're fair towards everyone uh, else. So they done, they've done about 20 different systems so far, and he tells me they're just getting started. This is just step one. Of course, there's more to the story. We'll have it tonight on City News at 5 and 6. We'll also tell you uh, the conversations and concerns around uh, your privacy and ethics when it comes to AI, AI systems, Mel. That was it. That was my big question of privacy. Faiza, you're going to answer all of that and more tonight. Thank you so much. Appreciate you joining this morning. Have a good Monday. You too.